but I think that Ten Hag, they do sway with the wind and the wind's blowing towards Ten Hag, so I think they'll go for him. Gary Neville there on the latest episode of The Overlap, speaking about Eric Ten Hag and the fact that he thinks that Manchester United's next manager is going to be Ten Hag. And what I'm going to do in this video, as I do quite a lot now, I, I like to take a look at what the pundits are saying around Manchester United and give my own comments on their opinions. So in this video, we're going to take a look at Gary Neville's comments in the latest episode of The Overlap. By the way, the link to this episode of The Overlap is in the comments. It is an excellent show with Roy Keane, with Gary Neville, with Jamie Carragher, inviting fans in to have a conversation about their clubs. And it's always interesting to hear what they have to say. And Gary Neville is somebody who, yeah, is, is, is pretty well respected among United fans in terms of his, of his opinion and, and what he has to say. So I'm going to run through all of those inside this video. If you do enjoy it by the end of it, please consider subscribing to United People TV. Ladies and gents, just go down there, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell as well. You get a ding every time I go live with a video. But let's get into it, right? What I'm going to do is run through Gary Neville's comments. I'm going to stop it at, at separate points and just give my own opinion on what Gary Neville has to say. So, so let's waste no more time. Let's get straight into it. Oh, we do know about him. He worked under Pep Guardiola, or sorry, in Bayern Munich when Pep Guardiola was there. We know the impact that that had. And I know he didn't work directly with him, but we know the impact that that's had on Mikel Arteta and his coaching philosophy. He's obviously won a couple of titles, a couple of cups in Holland. The style of play is good. Um, now, just that point there, his work that he did, uh, remember when Eric Ten Hag went to Bayern Munich? He left, I believe he was FC Twente's assistant manager. I think he was anyway. So he took a couple of steps down to go back and work with Guardiola because he wanted to work with one of what well, he considered one of the best coaches in world football. And that that was a significant moment for Ten Hag to do that. And it's it's definitely played a part of him because he's already admitted, if you watch my video on, on Ten Hag's philosophy, he's always he said that Guardiola had a big impact on his style of play. And so did Cruyff. And the start of play has, has been a, a bit of a key conversation point when it comes to Ten Hag and that identity that he has. Because it, if you're being honest, under Moyes, Van Gaal, Mourinho and Solskjaer, there never really was an identity. So I think that is a big part of why Ten Hag is being seen by many as the top choice for United. He's got more experience than I think most people think at the age of 52. It's a massive jump, but he's got a good coaching pedigree and um, he's not scarred. That's a good thing, I think, sometimes. He comes in fresh and not scarred. I mean, it doesn't mean physically scarred, but that point there about the fact that he's got a good coaching pedigree, yeah, he might not have Premier League experience, but, you know, Jurgen Klopp didn't have Premier League experience before he came to Liverpool. Thomas Tuchel didn't have Premier League experience before he came to Chelsea. Pep Guardiola didn't have Premier League experience before he went to Man City. It's not the be-all and end-all of whether or not you're going to be a successful manager in the Premier League. If you're a top coach somewhere else, you can be a top coach in the Premier League and you don't know that until you're there but this point here on, on Ten Hag and Pochettino and the, the lure of what a mystery is I think Gary Neville was a little bit right on this point uh, I did a poll the other day and I was absolutely stunned 200,000 yeah 240,000 people voted and I was stunned that it was 82 percent I, I, look there have been not I wasn't that stunned I mean, maybe I'm stunned by, by the scale of the majority. But it, it's obvious that more United fans want Ten Hag. And it, and it probably is, as I said, part of it is definitely due to what Gary Neville says next. Non-United fans voted, I'm sure, but most of them will have been United fans. 82% um, in favour of bringing him in over Pochettino. That, that did shock me. I knew that he would be favourite because you can smell it on social media yeah. what United fans want. Um, but I think Manchester United fans are demanding a fresh start, they're demanding a fresh name, they want something that's completely different that they've not seen before. And that's probably gone against Pochettino in some ways. I, I think I've got a soft spot for Pochettino because of the fact that I've seen him work close hand. Now this point here, again, it, it, and when I'm talking about that area of mystery, to rewind there to what I was saying about Gary Neville's points there, nobody really knows about Ten Hag. And that mystery, you, you, you look at, a, you look at a, it's like a, a similar sort of thing that you have with academy players. You don't know what they could do. You're excited about what their potential could be. And there's no sort of evidence that anybody can bring against you to prove why that player might not become the best player in the world. And it's, and it's exciting because you don't know what's going to happen. And there's certainly an element of that with Ten Hag and Poch. Everybody knows about Poch. We all watched him. Maybe not firsthand, but we all watched what he did at Spurs. And we saw the great work that he did do there. And I've reiterated that the whole way through. Watch did a great job at Spurs. 
he might have fallen short, but he was massively exceeding expectations getting Spurs into a title chase anyway. The fact that he fell short of the final hurdle shouldn't really come as a surprise. But it's the fact that everybody's watched what Poch has done for the last couple of years at PSG, has watched what happened at Spurs, has watched Spurs fail to win the Premier League, has watched Spurs fail to win the Champions League, has watched Spurs ultimately just fall short. And fans don't forget. And that definitely is a significant part of it. But a lot of people have been critical of Gary Neville in terms of why is he favouring Pochettino so much? This is probably exactly why. Spent a week at Tottenham uh, five or six years ago when he was there. Incredible in terms of the work that he was doing. The coaching was fantastic. Um, I actually think that... Gary Neville's got hands-on experience of working with Pochettino. That is why he's probably so pro. And it, and again, that might that should not really come as too much of a surprise. You know what you know. You trust what you know, what you've seen with your own two eyes, let alone what anybody else has been telling you about what a manager's doing somewhere else. So if he's gone and spent a week there and seen Poch's working methods and everything, he can see that Poch is a good coach and he knows that himself. So that's why Gary Neville's probably been swaying more towards Poch but even as he as I, he showed at the start of the video, the, the clip I showed there, even he admits at this point that it feels more likely that Ten Hag is going to come in. But let's see what else Gary Neville has to say on the whole situation. The, and I think you've said something like this in the past, Roy, that it, it's incredible. He goes to Paris, deemed a failure, mm. doesn't win the Champions League, didn't win the league last year, and all of a sudden he's not right for Manchester United. I actually think it makes him more right for Manchester United in the sense that he's now got the actual appreciation of working. Because the big thing for Pochettino, other than the fact that he hasn't won a trophy, uh, is that he... That's quite an, uh, you know, other than the fact that he hasn't won a trophy. Quite a significant thing, I suppose. He hadn't worked with star players. He hadn't worked yeah. with big names. He's now got that experience under his belt. So I think he's more rounded. I think he's better prepared to come and deal with the big players that Manchester United have got. You know, you know, Manchester United have got Paul Pogba, they've got uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. I don't know if Paul Pogba will be here next season, but if he is, yeah. massive, massive characters, big personalities. So he's more suited to come in and do what I think, you know, he wants to do at a club like Manchester United with the scrutiny on him. So I think Pochettino is best placed. So, you know, he's gone as far as saying best placed. When it comes to the point that he's trying to make there, you know, he's now, he's, he's gone, he's managed Mbappe, he's managed Neymar, he's managed Messi, he's managed Verratti, he's managed Thiago Silva, he's managed Marquinhos, he's managed top level, elite, world-class players. Has he done it incredibly well? No, they haven't won the Champions League, that's the ultimate measure of success at PSG. But Poch, uh, something that's mentioned quite a lot, really, is the relationship between Pochettino and Mbappe. Mbappe is probably number one in the world, in terms of the future of, of what's coming up, yeah, he is. I and mean, you can still probably, you can try and argue Messi above him, but certainly not in an hour's gone this season at PSG. You can try and argue Ronaldo still number one. But you're probably going to put Lewandowski there ahead of him. But Mbappe is the player of the next generation. He's already got like 231 goal involvements by the time he's at 23. And Poch has managed that very well. So I would agree that Poch has become a bit more rounded in that sense. He, he's, he's he's managed those big personalities and that's that's a part of his CV that Ten Hag doesn't have. Do I think that then makes him an overall the best candidate? I would disagree with Gary on that one. And I've explained that on so many different occasions as to why I think Ten Hag would be best suited. Let's see what, again, let's see what else he says. Still, because of what he's done at Southampton and Tottenham, he knows the Premier League. There's no shock. Um, but you sometimes look at the sort of the weight of opinion towards Ten Hag, and it's huge, absolutely huge. It's almost yeah. if Pochettino came in now. Manchester United be like, yeah. and that's something the club can't consider really. They've got to be professional and do the job diligently in terms of their interviews. Now, I have said this as well, um, and that does actually worry me, that if, uh, if after all of this, it ends up being Pochettino, I don't think Manchester United are in a bad place. I think it's still an excellent appointment. Do I think it would be the best appointment that we can make? No, I don't. I've made that clear. Sorry if my, uh, it looks like I'm going a bit... Jiggity jaggedy. I'm back in the room. Anyway, I don't think that Pochettino would be the best choice, but I don't think he'd be a bad choice in any way, shape or form. But there would be an element of, as Gary said, just uh, ugh, really? It's not who we wanted. I don't think that would be as significant as I've got it in my head at the moment. And I suppose that comes down to uh, the fact that 
you don't know what's coming around the corner. But again, I think that's something that is worth considering in this whole thing. I think Gary's pretty fair to point that out. And get it overdone quickly. You can't start an interview process and then finish it two, two months later. They have to finish this process quite quickly. But I think that Ten Hag, they do sway with the wind and the wind's blowing towards Ten Hag, so I think they'll go for him. And I, I completely agree on that point there. But Matt, it's been 10 days now since uh, Ten Hag was interviewed, right? 10 days. And still we have nothing. United have just got... Talk about this due diligence and this process, X, Y, Z. This process should have started in November when we had Radnick in as an interim manager. This is just the end of the process, whereas it almost feels like Manchester United started the process at the beginning of this international break. Get it done. We've got to get it done. The absolute latest, I think, that we can conceivably, I don't know, conceivably we could do it the last day of the season. In terms of helping the club, it needs to be done by about the 22nd of April. And that's a month before the end of the season. And that's also a month after we interviewed Ten Hag. If we want Ten Hag, we can't make him wait that much longer. But a point that Gary also raises as he, as he continues the conversation uh, is this one uh, about Ten Hag. And I think this is, worth, this is worth having a chat about as well. So for me, it's about the Ten Hag comes in. You know, there is an element of he won't know what's hit him. Now that I do think is true. And that's probably my biggest fear about Ten Hag, but also at the same time, no, it's, it's certainly lesser with Pochettino because he's worked inside the Spurs environment where, you know, he had a chairman who didn't want to give him any money. He had a whole season he had to go through without signing a player. And he coped with that environment. He's gone to PSG and the, and the political expectations of that the, of winning the, P winning the Champions League with PSG in the year that they're going to go for the Qatar World Cup. Obviously, he didn't deal with those expectations, but he's had to be in those sorts of environments. Ten Hag has been in a perfect environment for football to succeed at Ajax with Overmars and with Van der Sar. That sort of that trio has been torn apart by what happened with Overmars, and I think it's going to culminate with Ten Hag leaving at the end of this season. But at Manchester United, if Ten Hag does come in, that's why it's so crucial that we get the behind the scenes right, because there's no point dropping an, a top level manager in he will still face the same problems as a mid-level manager, as a low-level manager. He needs support. He needs the right people around him. That's why I've talked about Paul Mitchell in depth. That's why I've spoken about Ralph Rannick and that consultancy role and how important it is for United to get that right. But going back to what Gary Neville had to say there, I want to know what you think about it in the comments below. I think the overlap's an excellent show. I think it's a good debate show. And I think they raised some very interesting conversations. Gary Neville there, he's admitting that he thinks at this point, He'd be surprised if it's not Ten Hag coming in as United manager. I would be too, but United are very good at surprising us, sometimes in the wrong way. Some of the points he raised, I agree with. Some of the points, not so much, but we've run through them all here. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, make sure you drop a like on the video. As I said, go and watch the full overlap. Uh, that it, it's in The link is in the descriptions. It's an excellent show. I would encourage you to do it, as always. Uh, but make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. And I'll see you soon.